We're three months in, uh, into this administration. And it's obvious that we have a president that's not uh, fully in control of what's going on in the White House. It's obvious that we don't have uh, competent leadership based on the things that's going on in this country, okay? I believe that uh, uh, President Biden is being told what to do uh, by Obama and Susan Rice. I don't believe that uh, Biden is in control of what's going on because mainly uh, one of the reasons is because we know that Biden is in um, a mental decline. I mean, this has been going on. We've noticed this uh, way back before the election. So it's obvious that this man is in mental de uh, decline. And that's why he has been uh, given certain duties uh, to his vice president, who refuses to do the job. Okay, uh, where, where do I start? Uh, I guess I could start with uh, the border. Okay, now the first thing Biden did when he got in office was he stopped the construction of the border wall. Now that was mainly, the, you know, they hate Trump. They didn't want, they want, you know to uh, start overturn what he was doing, which was working. Let me remind you that President Trump had the border under under control. He had it under control, okay? Uh, border Illegal border crossings were down like 90%. This is under President of, uh, uh, Trump. Under, under 90%. He uh, unchained the hands of the border patrol and told them to do their job. He, he allowed them to just do their job. So he also, let me tell you what else President Trump did in order to get the border under, under control. He, uh, when, when all those caravans were trying to get through here and all that, uh, he uh, met with the uh, president of uh, Mexico. First of all, he stopped the money. He said, if you're not going to keep, if you're not going to stop those people in Mexico and not let them come on through to the U.S., he stopped the money. Well, money talks, people. So that brought the, uh, the Mexican president, the president of Mexico, to the table to do some negotiations. And they, they came up with a deal where the remain in Mexico deal. So all those people, instead of keeping on through trying to get to the U.S., he was, they, they made work out some kind of a deal, and it was working, people, where they would remain in Mexico. So we had our borders under control. Now listen, this is the difference between a business person and just a politician, a person that just talks. Business people know that no matter what the problem is, you have to jump in and tackle it. No matter how, what, you know, you have to jump in and, and tackle this problem and get it under control. Politicians, all they do is talk. They've never really governed. Okay, we have, you know, like all these lawyers that want to run for president, they've never governed. That's why governors, I think, are better at being president because they have to govern. They're over something. They have to make decisions. They have to make sure everything over everybody. Lawyers are only over, you know, they're, they're, uh, the people they're trying to convict or uh, defend. They're not over all of the, uh, you know, millions of people. They're not over their economy. They're not responsible for the, uh, the economy of millions of people and the safety of millions of people. Not attorneys. They're not. So President Trump jumped in as a businessman and handled every situation that needed to be solved, every problem he solved. Biden uh, gave, uh, delegated the job of the border crisis <laughs> to uh, his vice president. Vice President Kamala Harris. And she said she wasn't going to do it. She basically said she was going to do some kind of research and go visit these countries and find out why. What's the problem? Now, you don't need to go to anywhere to figure out what the problem is. The problem is free stuff. These people were coming here. She, oh, I want to know why they're all coming here, basically. I'm going to go do a study. This is what she said. Now, this is also letting us know she's already showing us how she's going to lead when she takes over because she'll be taking over pretty soon because Biden is in decline. She's already telling us what kind of president she's going to be. Uh, you know, I'm not going to do it. So she hasn't been to the border. They don't want to take any uh, questions about the border. And they were trying to block the media from going to the border. Let's talk about the border again. I, I want to stay on this because when President Trump was in office, and they were claiming that he had kids in cages. I want you to remember this. I want you to go back. You have to pay attention to details. 
he did not stop any of the media or politicians from running down there. In fact, Maxine Waters ran down there. All the politicians ran down to the border because they were claiming kids were in cages. But did you notice that not one of those politicians came back with evidence that kids were in cages? They had no photos, no videos. Now, if you're running to the border claiming that kids are being mistreated, wouldn't you take photographs and video? Nobody came back with anything. They all ran down there. Uh, President Trump was very transparent. He didn't try to stop anything. They all came back and they got this narrative going with no evidence. And they kept that narrative going uh, the whole four years that kids were in cages. When there was no evidence. So now that kids are actually in cages. And uh, uh, what if, uh, what's his name? James O'Keefe went down there and got videos and showed it. Uh, the actual, real, what's really going on at the border, you didn't hear anything else about it. Everybody uh, is silent, crickets. And now we have a vice president and a president that won't even go down there. You know, uh, First Lady Melania went down there because she kept hearing about how they were being mistreated. So she went down there for herself and saw that they were not being mistreated. And she came back. Okay, so we have this issue with the border. Then... What else can we talk about? Of course, you know, he killed the pipeline, you know, the Keystone pipeline. And then gas prices have gone up. Here we are. We're only in April, okay? It's not even the summer months. And and red states are feeling it. But blue states are as well because you know they're going to always tax higher. Anyway, in California, they have gas tax. They have all this. So they're already at $4 in some places in California. And we're not even in the summer months because, you know, usually during the summer months, Gas prices go up because it's vacation season, and they know that, so they, you know, they gouge, I guess you could call, at the tr at the pump. Well, now here we are, just in April, and we are at, and here in, in Texas, you know, we're only, the last time I filled up is like two forty, two dollars and forty cents. but people are sending me stuff saying in California it's $4, almost $5, already. So, now a lot of liberals think that that had, that had nothing to do with Biden cutting the, the pipeline, the Keystone pipeline. They think that it had nothing to do with it because they're ignorant. They can't see the correlation between anything because they're being fed lies uh, from the media. So that was a thing. Now, Right now, the national economy has not collapsed, okay? It's still doing pretty well, and that's because of Tr President Trump's policies he's had in place. Uh, and uh, Florida is 4% uh, unemployment. That's good. Uh, and Texas is low. Red states are doing fine because they didn't, they've already tried to open back up. And, you know, and in fact, I see uh, job, help wanted signs all over here in Texas. Texas is booming, everybody's booming. But the blue states still have high unemployment, 9%. Places like Chicago. Uh, Chicago, uh, New York, and California, they still have a high unemployment rate, and that's only because they refuse to open up their economy. So it's the, the, the economy is still hanging on, okay? So, but at the rate that the, uh, these blue states are going, because that was their whole plan, people, was to collapse the economy. That's what they wanted. They do not want a, a thriving economy. Because then people are not dependent upon them. They want complete control. So we have that. And then, of course, we have all these shootings how, and how they're only highlighting when it's a, a, a white person shooting, somebody black, or a white person doing mass shootings. The media, they, when they hear about a mass shooting, they don't even know who the shooter is. They assume, right off the bat, it's a white supremacist and all this and a white person. And then when they find out it's a non-white, then they drop the story. Oh, the reason they're focusing in on this is because they don't want you to focus in on what's what matters. What affects you? What affects you is the economy, our national security, the border. All of that affects the taxpayers. So they don't talk about that that much. They want to get you emotionally uh, led around by uh, racism. So that so you see what's happened in the past week. You've seen what happened. With the happened with the uh, the George Floyd uh, Chauvin uh, trial. Now I actually believe that they wanted uh they didn't want the guilty. They didn't want it. They wanted to, because they want more riots. Those are also distractions. You understand that? When they have all these rioting and going on, those are distractions to keep you from seeing how they're uh, destroying the country. That's why they do that. Well, now Maxine Waters, of course, she came out while the jury were, uh, were de de <laughs> deliberating, okay? She came out and made her statement. She went there and said, you know, we want all guilty and all, all, all or else. Okay, that was done on purpose, people, because I believe that she wanted a mistrial. Because so, if it's a mistrial, what happens? Rioting and stuff. That's what they want. Tearing up stuff. Well, 
the jury, they're human. They have families, they have jobs, they may have businesses. They don't want their, their lives destroyed because of liberals. So they, I think they were just scared. They gave guilty on all three. I don't believe he was guilty of all three counts. I don't personally believe that because of the defense when they put the facts out. He was not, because that would, if he's guilty of all three, it meant he went there on purpose to kill a black, you know, and then race and everything to do with it. Of course, they want you to think that. But he went there on purpose to the kill. I don't believe that. Now, I just think he was callous when he did not remove his knee from the shoulder. It wasn't on the neck. We saw that in the video in the court case. But I believe he was very, you know, hardened, and, and, he, and he treated him like uh, uh, inhuman, uh, and he kept his knee there even after they checked the pulse and saw that the man was no pulse. I believe that, but I believe this is my own personal opinion. I don't believe everything to do with race. I think that these police officers deal with so many hardened criminals, to they have gotten to the point where they just dehumanize people. They don't even feel it anymore because they're just slamming them down in all races. They're doing this to all races. They're not just doing it to black people. They deal with hardened criminals all day long. So they've gotten to the point that they don't have any feelings for them. And that's the thing, uh, I think, what happens a lot in these cases. And plus, they're afraid for their lives, too. Well, with the, with the George Floyd case, I think the problem was he, he put his knee on him and he refused to get up because he just didn't care. Okay, they, but... To me, but he did not call, he didn't go there intentionally to kill anybody. So all this murder stuff, all the three counts, I don't believe he was guilty of all that. I believe he was guilty and he should do some time, but not for all the three counts that they acquitted, uh, they uh, charged him with. But the, I think the uh, the uh, jury, the jury was afraid for their lives and they said, I'm going to give them all three and let's go home and live our lives. And you know, and I, you can't much blame them because Democrats have politicized every organization, every department in the U.S. They've politicized the Department of Defense. They've politicized all the universities. They've even gotten to the military. Every, all the big corporate, everywhere you go, every organization is, has been politicized by liberals. So these jurors, you know, they, they're thinking about their livelihoods. But I think, you know, uh, Al Sharpton flew in. Do you think Al Sharpton flew in because he thought they were going to get all guilty? He was hoping that they didn't so they could get the rioting going. Maxine, why well, they want the rioting? Because that's, that's what they want. They want to keep things going. So they're going to keep doing this. All these shootings. Every time it's a shooting, it's, they're going to focus in on if it's a white person, a white cop killing a black. They're not going to focus on because black cops kill whites. This thing's happened, okay? White people are getting killed just as much as black criminals. Criminals are being shot by police when they resist arrest or fight the police, no matter what race. But the media only shows you the black on purpose. Why? To keep your emotions up. So you would think they're just killing black people? LeBron James, oh, he's tired of seeing blacks shot by cops. He said that's what he's tired. He's not tired of all the blacks being shot and killed by each other, other blacks. He's not upset about that seven-year-old girl that was sitting in the back seat of a car at McDonald's, my, a child. He's not upset about that. He said he's tired of seeing blacks killed by cops, white cops, white cops at that. He's not caring about the whites being killed by cops because t they're telling you that that's not happening. So, the state of our union is not good, people. It's not. We have uh, a president that's not all there, that's being led around and told what to do. We have a vice president, whenever she's asked a question, she starts cackling. You see, so I'm telling you, I don't have any good things to report. People say, why haven't you done any video? Because I am a positive person. I don't like to give out a lot of negative stuff. I don't like to get on camera and just talk about all the bad. But there's nothing good to talk about. There's nothing good to talk about. I hate to say that, but those are the facts. And I'm a, I'm a realist as well. So that's why I don't do videos. I, I don't want to keep getting on here whining and complaining with no solutions. Because I'm a problem solver. Because it used to, when President Trump was in office, I could give you the negative, but I could always tell you what the solution was because President Trump was always doing something good for us. Every, every policy he had benefited all Americans. They don't tell you that in the media. That's why they talked about things that were not going on. That's why they lied on it and they kept you distracted with dumb stuff. They never, ever talked about the policies because they were good for America. So now that he's no longer in office and the country is being literally destroyed before our eyes, they're talking about race stuff. You have a president, Biden, he got out and made a statement saying, I hope the jury gives the correct, the right verdict. What is that? So these jurors were uh, scared to death because they had the President of the United States, 
uh, and then Maxine Water, Waters, a congresswoman, uh, you know, all these people out here putting pressure on a jury when they should have kept their mouths closed. Why? They wanted a mistrial so they can get more riots going. So this is the state of the uh, the nation. There's nothing positive to say. The only thing I can, the only solution that I can give, and I like to say when you tell someone something negative, you should also have some kind of solution. That's the pro I don't have any solutions for the for this country as a whole, as a nation. I do for people uh, in, in red states, especially red states. The solution for people in red states to make sure you fight hard. This is home, where you live. Fight hard to keep your state red. The people in the blue states, the conservatives in blue states, I don't know what to tell you, but do all you can to try to fight and get some conservatives in the local, because uh, that's where the fight is now. You can forget the, nation, the nation's capital. It's over. Okay, I hate to say that, but it's over as far as uh, the national, the national uh, politics. There's nothing. We have about what? Somebody said in the comment this morning they were telling the truth. We have maybe about three or four conservatives in D.C. fighting for the country. And the rest of the country is gone. All the other politicians, all the Democrats, you know, they're trying to destroy the country. The other GOP people, they're rhinos and weakbacks and wimps. So nobody's fighting for the four or five people. All we have in D.C. fighting for the nation. This country's gone. It's going to take a supernatural power of God to get this country back. It's completely gone, people. I'm just going to give it to you straight. So all you can do as a citizen is work at home and try to fight to take care of home. Because D.C. is gone. And that is why I haven't been doing any videos because I don't like being negative. But there's a time you just have to state the facts. And those are the facts, people. That is the state of our union. Have a blessed day.